SpaceX's Starship launch vehicle has many potential uses and capabilities that will enable companies and organizations to access space like never before. Designed to become the world's most powerful and largest rocket in history, the 400-foot-tall stainless steel spacecraft not only enables a sustainable human presence in space long-term, but also is capable of launching over 100 tons of cargo to orbit, enabling companies to launch entire constellations of satellites in a single mission. With a single launch, a Starlink broadband fleet of 400 satellites can be launched into orbit. However, realizing its potential is not easy. SpaceX had to continuously improve upon the Starship Super Heavy prototypes. The prototype that was equipped with the newest major upgrades is Ship 24, most notably its nose cone. So, what other changes are happening? And what does it mean for the future of Starship missions? All this and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. First, let's go a bit on the nose. Uh, you can see that's like three rows of stamped sections. Yep. Uh, this is this is, this will be made of two rows of stretch form. Wow. SpaceX has been working on a new and improved version of Starship's nose cone for at least a year and assembling pathfinders and prototypes of varying fidelity since mid 2020. Around the same time when Starship SN15 became the first and only prototype to successfully launch and land. Further down the rocket. Hints of Starship Dome upgrades are a much more recent development. Excluding Starship Mark 1, which never had its far flimsier nose fully installed, the Starship nose design has been extremely consistent ever since SpaceX began building the first prototypes in mid-2020. Early prototypes were inevitably scrapped as SpaceX quickly iterated on those nose designs and assembly process, culminating in Starship SN8, which became the first prototype to have its basic structure, which includes tank section, nose, and flaps fully assembled. Though improvements and changes have almost certainly been made over the last 18 months, the early unflown prototypes and the noses of Starships SN8, 9, 10, 11, 15, 16, 20, and 22 have all been constructed in roughly the same way. SpaceX would first produce a series of thin, stamped sheets or gores of steel. Once aligned on custom-built jigs, each of those gores would be welded together to form a slightly conical ring. Five rings total would be assembled, each narrower and more conical than the last. The five sections would then be stacked one by one and welded together along their circumferences. Altogether, around 120 complex vertical welds would be needed just to assemble the most basic structure of a nose, followed by four or five equally as complex circumferential welds to turn those sections into one cone. SpaceX's upgraded design seeks to simplify that process mainly by increasing the size of the gores. Aside from modestly reducing the number of longitudinal sections needed to form the cone, SpaceX has also reduced the number of stacked sections from 5 to 2, slashing the total number of gores needed by at least a factor of 2 or 3. While not quite as substantial, the same simplification also reduces the length of vertical and circumferential welds needed to assemble a nose cone. And something worth noting, starting with Ship 24, the methane or fuel header tank will be relocated from Starship's common dome to its nose cone. From the beginning, Starship's oxygen header tank has been located at the very tip of the nose, placed in such an inconvenient location for the sole purpose of shifting Starship's center of gravity forward. Now, the methane header tank will join it in the nose, with the obvious explanation being a need to shift that center of gravity even further forward. It's possible that this change was planned even before SpaceX realized the performance benefits of a stretched 9-engine Starship, but it could also be a preemptive modification meant to counteract the added weight of three more Raptor engines and longer tanks. SpaceX has even outfitted Ship 24 with a truly unique Starlink satellite dispenser. The device is installed inside what appears to be the steel rings of Ship 24's nose cone, eventually being stacked on top. It's nothing like any satellite deployment adapter observed in the past or present. SpaceX has craned the rectangular framework inside of the barrel-like section of five steel rings, a cylinder measuring around 9 meters by 9 meters, about two weeks ago. Looked rudimentary and lacked any obvious moving parts, generating some ambiguity. 
Based on its apparent dimensions, the frame could likely extend anywhere from 10 to 15 meters up into Ship 24's nose cone before the diameter would get too narrow for it to continue. If it was a satellite deployment adapter, which most expected it to be, it was nothing like any other common adapter, including SpaceX's own unusual present-day Starlink deployment method. It wasn't until March 24th that SpaceX spun the nose barrel around, revealing an unusual cutout akin to a giant mail slot. At that point, it became clear that Ship 24's nose had been fitted with a Starlink satellite deployment mechanism akin to a giant Pez dispenser. And to all of our international viewers who do not understand what a Pez dispenser is, just... Anyway. Instead of a large alligator-like payload bay, all Starship would need is a comparatively tiny slot and either an active or passive mechanical deployment mechanism. Starling satellites would be first loaded one by one into the slot and somehow lifted inside the bay on the real-life frame SpaceX recently installed. Eventually, that dispenser will be filled up with a stack of an unknown number of Starling satellites. Most likely the larger Starlink V2 prototypes, but possibly today's smaller V1.5 satellite variant. Once in orbit, the stack of satellites would be ejected one by one through Starship's payload slot. Erk X and O both released amazing animations for it. We truly appreciate their hard work. Please don't forget to show your support for them by following their Twitter as well as their YouTube accounts. It'd be a pity if you were to miss out on future quality creations from them. Anyway, most importantly, alongside the first fully outfitted prototype with an upgraded Starship nose cone design, the nose barrel, the apparent Starlink dispenser, is part of, has also been fitted with heat shield standoffs, ceramic wool insulation, and netting. What's more, technicians began installing dinner plate sized heat shield tiles on the barrel section's exterior within the last few days. The logic behind SpaceX's star-based decision-making has been increasingly indecipherable in recent months, but in theory, it would make little logical sense to waste time, effort, and money installing a thermal protection system on a Starlink dispenser. In other words, it's quite likely that this Starlink dispenser is actually a part of Starship 24's flight hardware. However, all of this makes sense only when Starship makes its first orbital flight. Sadly, most likely this May schedule for SpaceX will be pushed back. While it's good to see Elon Musk sharing a photo of the Raptor 2 engines at Starbase, it's clear that the available numbers are still far from meeting demand. Previously, Musk has estimated it will take a month to fully integrate the 39 flight-worthy Raptor engines to power the orbital flight. And now we've come to the end of April. That time frame originally tight from the beginning has only looked less and less likely. In short, I guess there will still be some tests with Raptor 2 engines in the near future, but the June schedule seems more feasible. And that's it for today's episode. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.